I, uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to be with all of you and uh, thank the other panelists uh, for participating today and being part of what we need to do. What we need to do, quite frankly, is to turn this thing around. Uh, we need to elect a Democratic governor. The reality is, sitting here in this room today, we would all be far better off if we had, in fact, elected Democrats over the last 23 years. One of the things we've got to do in this election is remind Democratic voters, independent voters across this state that Democrats actually get it right, that they actually uh, know how to run government, that they can take it, they can mold it, they can make it work for people, they can create educational systems and job opportunities and distribute uh, opportunity far better than Republicans do. You know, I think if we've learned anything over the last eight years of a Bush administration, it is that when you elect a party and when you elect people who at their very core do not trust and do not believe in government, then you should not be surprised what you get in return. The reality is we're Democrats and we understand that we built Social Security. We understand the obligation of taking care of our poor people. We understand the power of a great public educational system. We understand the role that government plays in creating jobs. We understand the role that government plays in making sure that we have reasonably priced energy. And on the energy uh, side, we do have some great leadership from Democrats uh, uh, in this room. Um, the reality is, is their efforts have been thwarted time and time and time again by a party and a people who do not trust us, do not trust the people of Connecticut. We need a Democratic governor. And what do we need to do that? We need to find a candidate who has a voice that resonates with the people of Connecticut. We need to find a candidate who has a vision which responds to and helps lead the people of Connecticut. And ultimately, we need to select a candidate who has a record of accomplishment, something that we can point to with pride. And so I'm going around the state and talking about who I am and what I am, and some of you know me and some of you don't. I'm the youngest of eight kids. My mother was a school nurse, and my father graduated from eighth grade and built an insurance agency sufficient to pay for the education of those eight kids. My mother started a labor union. I've uh, been uh, uh, involved in government literally all of my life. I, in fact, remember in 1964 holding a sign for Lyndon Johnson's re-election. And I was on a daily basis reminded by my mother that, Daniel, you have an obligation to leave this world a better place than the way you found it. That's what a Democrat is, after all. You know, we can talk and will talk in the coming moments about lots of issues. But the reality here in Connecticut is we rank dead last for job production since 1991 of all 50 states. That is job one for any governor. And it is particularly job one for a Democratic governor who understands that people are losing jobs right now in this state are our people. The people who go to our stop and shops and, uh, and our Shaw's grocery stores and, and our Costco's and, and have to buy goods and have to pay electric bills and have to pay their taxes. This governor has demonstrated time and time and time and time again that she doesn't really care about those people. If she did, she'd come to work more often than three times a week. If she did, she'd be here or in a room like this meeting with people and understanding the difficulties in their life. If she did, she would not have done one of the most disingenuous things I've ever seen a leader do in this state. On Monday, she goes on TV for five minutes in a statewide address and tells the state that they have an $8 billion deficit problem. And on Wednesday, she delivers a budget that only addresses $6 billion of it. And then she pretends to take the high ground of being against taxes without the obligation of saying what she would do about it. The reality is, is we need to call her on that every day. We need to hold up a mirror to her face and, quite frankly, to some other, even Democrats' faces and say, what have you done to create a job in this state? What have you done to get our electric rates down from twice the national average? What have you done to improve, improve public education? Why do we have this achievement gap? Now, you know, one of the things that I can stand, about, uh, stand before you and talk about is a record of accomplishment. When I became mayor in the crime area, Stanford was the 35th safest city in America. Last year, it was the fourth safest city in America. We've created jobs. We've grown in population. We believe in affordable housing. Uh, we've created a public health system second to none. We make sure that people get dental care when they didn't get it when I was elected mayor. 
And we've done all of that by maintaining our city side expenses uh, at less than the inflation rate over a 14 year period of time. You know, I'm fond of saying, you know, I'm in my 14th year as mayor, no one's ever served more than eight, and that's a record not likely to be achieved for at least another 14 years. <laughs> I have to tell you one, one thing. I um, was asked to speak to 1199, the union that represents healthcare workers in this state, at a rally, because we have a governor who has produced a budget that would actually cut $300 million out of nursing home care over the next couple of years. And I was standing before this assembled crowd of people who change bedpans and feed people and get them out of bed so that they don't have sores. And, and I was moved to say the following. But I'm actually not proud to be a, from a state where a governor would propose a budget that attempts to balance that budget on the backs of people lying in sick beds. We need a governor who reflects our values. We need a governor who will stand up for us. We need a governor who understands what the issues are and will address them day in, pay out for the next eight years. Look forward to your question.